Welcome. In this video, I'm going to be talking to you about the unit circle, which we have drawn here on the board. And <clears throat> this is one of those topics that for Calculus 1 courses is absolutely essential that students understand before they even get into the class. If you have never learned the values on the unit circle before, maybe you had a trig class, but you weren't forced to memorize the unit circle, this is something you just have to do if you want to be very successful in calculus. So every time I teach calculus one, I always say, hey, if you haven't done it yet, take a few minutes, memorize the unit circle. It really isn't that hard to learn, and I'm going to give you some tips today on how you can remember the values of the unit circle and uh, be very successful in Calculus 1. So let's go straight to the unit circle. Let's look over here. Here's my unit circle. And when I say the unit circle, what I'm really saying is it's a circle of radius 1 centered at the origin. And uh, we have different angles that are associated with this circle. The first angle that's really important is the angle that goes straight from the origin on the positive x-axis. And we call this angle 0. And all other angles on the unit circle are measured off of this angle. So if we move in a positive direction of angle, we move this way. Negative direction would be this way. <clears throat> so some very important angles that we need to write in here on the unit circle. Here's the first angle that we might consider. This is the angle pi over 6. Here we have the angle pi over 4. Here's the angle pi over 3. And then finally, uh, the positive y-axis we call the angle pi over 2. Okay, so these are uh, five really important angles that we should be familiar with, and we should understand what their position is on the unit circle. So, <clears throat> um, now we can start talking about well, what's the cosine of these angles? Uh, what is the cosine of zero? And really, cosine is just a fancy math way of saying what's the x value of that angle. Okay, So if we look at that point on the unit circle that the angle zero intersects, we're saying, what is the x value of that point? And that's a pretty easy question to answer, right? Uh, the x value of that point is 1. So out here by 0, I'm going to put its cosine value. And its cosine value is 1. And I'll just circle it right there to make it very clear that the cosine of 0 is 1. If we want to talk about the cosine of the angle pi over 6, what we're really saying is at this point on the unit circle, what is the x value? And the x value, you can see it's a number that's in between 0 and 1, and it's closer to 1 than it is to 0. And the value that, uh, the x value of that point is the square root of 3 over 2. The x value at this angle, pi over 4, is the square root of 2 over 2. The x value of pi over 3 is 1 over 2. And then finally, if we look straight up the positive y-axis, we can see that the x value of this point would be 0. So, so far what I've told you is that the x values of these different angles uh, we can find, and that's how we can remember which ones are bigger and which ones are smaller. The x value of this point is obviously much larger than the x value of this point. This one's 1, this one's 0. Everything else is in between, depending on what its x value is. Now, something that I really think is kind of cute and clever is that 1 is the same thing as the square root of 4 over 2, right? Uh, this is just a clever little way to write 1. But this is the square root of 3 over 2. This is the square root of 2 over 2. 1 over 2 is actually the square root of 1 over 2, right? And 0 is the square root of 0 over 2. Uh, if you look at it that way, it's kind of cool. 
because you can kind of think of this as it's the square root of 4 over 2, square root of 3 over 2, square root of 2 over 2, square root of 1 over 2, square root of 0 over 2, and this pattern keeps going. Uh, cosine and x, you can kind of think about cosine and the x-axis as being friendly. And so when you're on the positive x-axis, cosine is positive. When you're on the negative x side of this circle, then cosine is negative. Cosine and x are friends. What x does, cosine does in some sense. So if x is positive, cosine is positive. That means over here for some of these other angles, let's move over to this side. Uh, other important angles is if I go up here, this might be called uh, 2 pi over 3. Here we have 3 pi over 4. This is the angle uh, 5 pi over 6. And then finally, the negative x-axis we also call the angle pi. Uh, we can fill these in because we know that over here x is negative, but we just use the same step process. We've got square root of 4, square root of 3, square root of 2, square root of 1, square root of 0, and what should come next? Well, maybe the square root of negative 1, or if you prefer, negative 1 half. Okay? Uh, what should come next? Well, the negative square root of 2 over 2, and that's exactly what it is. What's next in the pattern? Negative square root of 3 over 2. What's next in the pattern? Negative square root of 4 over 2, but negative square root of 4 over 2 is just negative 1. Okay, so notice that it doesn't matter if I'm on the top of the circle or the bottom of the circle, the x value is the same. So everything that's on the bottom of this circle is just going to be a reflection of what's on the top of the circle. And what I mean by that is now let's go back. Let's list some angles here. The important angles I need to know about is this would be 7 pi over 6. This is 5 pi over 4. This one would be, let's see, um, 4 pi over 3. And this would be 3 pi over 2. If we want the cosine of these different angles, then we keep the pattern going. Here we had 4, 3, 2, 1, 0, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4, and now we walk backwards. So this is negative root 3 over 2. This is negative root 2 over 2. This is negative 1 over 2. And this is negative root 0 over 2, or otherwise known as 0. So here are the cosine values of these angles. I think we could fill in the rest. Uh, we need to know the angles. So here are the three important angles on this side of the unit circle. We have um, 5 pi over 3. This would be 7 pi over 4. Uh, 11 pi over 6. And now we can fill in the cosine values. The cosine value here, we went negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1. So this is 1 half. Square root 2 over 2. Square root 3 over 2. And finally, square root 4 over 2, which gets us back to angle 0. So here I've listed every angle of importance on the unit circle and their cosine values at those angles. So if I ask you something like, what is the cosine of 5 pi over 6? Then you look at the angle 5 pi over 6 and you say, oh, uh, the x value is negative. Cosine cares about x. The x value is negative. And then, uh, well, is it in the 0 position, the 1 position, the 2 position, the 3 position, or the 4 position, it's in the 3rd position. So negative square root 3 over 2. And that is how uh, I calculate these things in my head. I have a picture of 
where are all the angles, and then how do I figure out from that angle what the cosine is by thinking about its position in the circle. Once you memorize this little pattern, this is easy stuff. Okay, but you've got to memorize the pattern. Take a few minutes, memorize the pattern for cosine, and in the next video I'll talk to you about how do we change this just slightly and do the same thing for sine.